Okay, so the first thing you need to know about igneous rocks is that they form from either deep within the earth where there is a lot of magma or as they spew out of a volcano. Magma happens to be molten rock within inside the earth. Um, it's caused because you have radioactive elements generate thermal energy which can then melt the rock. As the rocks melt they become a little bit less dense than surrounding rock and therefore because they're less dense they tend to float. And they go upward and find pockets inside the crust or if there's enough pressure they will come out into the open. We call that a volcano. The molten rock that actually reaches the surface and flows from volcanoes is actually called lava. So really the difference between magma and lava is simply where they are. Um, lava is magma, and uh, but magma doesn't necessarily have to be lava. So if it's inside the earth, we call it magma. If it is on the surface of the earth coming through a volcano, we call that magma or lava. As magma begins to cool, the different atoms are then arranged or rearranged and they start forming new crystals. Rocks are formed as these mineral crystals mineral grains grow together. And remember in order for a crystal to grow it needs two things time and space as well as materials such as mica or calcite or whatever other mineral it might be growing, potassium, feldspar. There's two types of magma. The first type is intrusive Think of intrusive as an intruder, somebody that comes in. So you have intrusive igneous rocks where they find cracks in the rocks and they just kind of form below the surface. Okay, They don't reach the surface. And because they're able to stay warmer a little bit longer, those mineral grains tend to become more visible. And if given enough time, they will actually get quite large. Um, and it's not until weathering and erosion actually exposes them over time that we ever really even see things like granite. The other type of magma is actually a lava. It's considered extrusive igneous rocks. What happens is as the lava reaches the surface or magma reaches the surface begins to be lava, we end up getting lava that cools um, at least on the surface, sometimes just below the surface. And they have very small crystals because they cool off so quick. The atoms obviously don't have as much time to rearrange themselves and start growing crystals. So therefore, the time factor is not there. And uh, so when you're looking at magma, consider how fine the grain is. The finer the grain, um, the more likely you have an extrusive rock. If you actually can't see minerals, you're looking at extrusive rocks. If you can see minerals, chances are you are looking at intrusive rocks, rocks that have been formed inside of the earth. Now we're going to take a look at a few extrusive and intrusive examples. So here we're looking at three different intrusive rocks. You can tell they're intrusive because you've got mineral grains that actually started to grow. Um, you can see this uh, piece of granite. You've got large um, crystals. You've got tons of feldspar crystals that are just huge that cover most of it. This one is, you can see that it's much smaller on the crystals, um, but you do have some. For example, that one right there. Um, all they do is they tell you how quickly they form. 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 You do have some. For example, that one right there. Um, all they do is they tell you how quickly they form. Okay, there's some important vocabulary words that you need to know when you are trying to identify igneous rocks. Um, there's really three types. You're going to look at basaltic rocks, which happen to be very dense, for the most part, 
heavy. They're going to be dark. The reason they're dark is they're rich in iron and magnesium. They tend to come from volcanoes, such as the ones in Hawaii. And usually the lava that comes out of them is going to be relatively liquid, almost like a honey. Sometimes a little bit thicker. And as we talk about volcanoes, we'll get into the different types of lava flows that are just awesome to discuss. The other type of rock is you're going to get granitic rock, which is going to be light colored. It's going to be a lower density. That's what allowed it to rise through the crust. Um, the molten rock, it's going to be kind of thick and a little bit stiff. And that's why it gets stuck, so to speak, inside. It's not so liquidy, so it has a more difficult time to rise to the surface. It's going to contain a lot of silicon and oxygen. Remember that word silicon and oxygen from the word silicates, a mineral group that we talked about. And quartz is made out of silicon and oxygen. came from your last test, so expect that again on this one. Um, volcanoes that, if they do erupt, they're going to be the explosive type. Okay, You're going to get pretty powerful volcanoes because it's stuck. It doesn't come out easily. So just know that if you get these light colored, lower density rocks, um, you're looking at a very explosive volcano. The third type is going to be andesitic. Okay, um, It's going to be a little bit between basaltic and granitic. Okay, So that's really the difference. It's, it's considered intermediate. It's in between them. A few more vocab words. The other thing that we're going to be looking at is texture because that's extremely important if you have mineral crystals that are greater than one centimeter that's a pretty good size actually um, you're looking at a very slow cooling very thick magma you have magmas that are like phaneritic which you're going to have smaller mineral crystals it also shows slowing and thick magma then you have porphyritic which is actually interesting these porphyritic uh, igneous rocks are actually going to have large and small crystals, which demonstrates that there was a period of slow and then rapid cooling, slow and then rapid cooling over time. And what causes that is just the change in what magma is made out of. And then you have affinitic crystals, which are smaller than one millimeters. It shows you that you are now getting into the more rapid cooling fluid lava. It's coming out of the volcano. Three more textures to be aware of is glassy texture, which you guys have already seen. Um, a little bit of vesicular, which we've kind of taken a look at. Those are the ones that are going to show bubbles where rapid cooling of gas charged lava those bubbles just pop um, and leaving holes as it cools off and finally you're going to have pyroclastic or fragmental lava um, which pyroclastic is pyro meaning fire of course you guys that are pyromaniacs and clastic meaning pieces or fragments and so when a volcano explodes extremely powerfully Sometimes those rocks will get stuck together inside of, say, a mass of ash and tuff, um, and it turns into rock, and I'll show you an example of that in a second. Okay, next we need to know about the different igneous colors. That also is important because they help you identify what type of lava and magma it was, and therefore what type of power was behind the volcano, they're going to help you basically help you identify the rocks and what type of environment um, they came from. So the first word is mafic, which is dark colored. And then you have ultramafic, which is really, really black. And then you have felsic, which is going to be your light colored um, rocks, pinks, granite color, whiter color, things that are going to have a lot of granite in it, a lot of potassium feldspar. Um, very light minerals. Okay, so here we have some pegmatic and phaneritic crystals. Um, you can see that this is a pretty good sized crystal here. I wish I had a little bit more light on it. See if I can get a little bit closer. Um, that's probably about 10 millimeters in size. It might not quite be that big, so you might have a phaneritic versus pegmatic. Um, 
This is more of a porphyritic. This isn't the best example of one. I do have some large mineral, large mineral, large mineral, large mineral, large mineral, large mineral, large. Um, this is more of a porphyritic. This isn't the best example of one. I do have some large mineral. Okay, here's a really good rock, in my opinion, to show you a pyroclastic rock. This is actually ancient ash. Okay, you can actually see the sparkles of quartz that was blasted in here. What's really cool about this is that you have these white sections here. Here's a good long one. What these were is these are layers of ash, and inside those layers of ash, were air pockets and due to the weight of this volcano near Tucson um, over time 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 um, over side those layers of ash were air pockets and okay so now what we're gonna do is we are going to go straight into igneous rock identification similar to minerals the nice thing is a lot fewer examples a lot fewer Minerals try to identify. I think it's quite an easier task to identify. I'm going to show you the flow chart that will help you um, figure this out. I don't know the quality that we're going to get recording this, but basically the first thing you're going to ask when trying to identify an igneous rock is use your notes that has the vocab. You're going to ask yourself, is it pegmatic, which means has large crystals, phaneritic, a little bit smaller, Notice I really don't have any porphyritic because they kind of bounce back and forth between the two. But aphanitic is going to have fairly small crystals. They might be visible, might not be. And you're going to ask yourself, is it vesicular? Does it have a holes in it? Is it, 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 it might be visible, might not be. And you're going to ask yourself, is it vesicular? Does it have a holes in it? Is it? This is what I look like, by the way, after soccer practice and about 11.30 at night trying to get this done for you guys tomorrow. Because after all, I would hate for you guys to miss out on a great lecture of mine. So anyways, as I was saying, you're going to get in your groups. And the substitute's going to kind of keep an eye on a clock somewhere. And you're going to have anywhere between two to four minutes to try and identify rocks. Okay, And you're going to identify eight rocks. You're each going to have a paper that looks like this. You're going to write your sample numbers down along this column. The text you're present, okay, that's phaneritic, aphanitic. Um, minerals present. What minerals do you think are in there? Again, if it's pinks, you're looking at potassium feldspar. If you see whites, you're looking at quartz. 
if you're seeing black, you're not going to be able to really tell what mineral you have in there because the minerals did not have time to grow. But if you can identify any minerals, biotype micas or some of those shiny things, um, cork, 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 time to grow. But if you can identify any minerals, biotype micas or some of those shiny things, um, cork. Wish us luck as we go and try to beat Payson. Um, but really work hard on this. Okay, See if you can't figure out. Use those uh, skills that we've been talking about, your observation skills, your ability to um, identify and make inferences and work together. You know, Figure it out. Let's see how you guys do. And tomorrow, if you're not done, um, I would be glad to give you more time assuming the substitute said you guys worked hard.